3D Craft is a UK Ireland digital humanities network jointly led by the National Trust and Trinity College Dublin. It considers how digital methods can reveal hidden craft processes in 18th century buildings, which are damaged, inaccessible or lost, or whose records tell us about how they were made. The buildings of Trinity College are the most richly documented of the period in Ireland, with surviving bills from a host of English and Irish craftsmen and women. They are, however, working university buildings with only partial public access. Traditional accounts of historic buildings favour top-down narratives of patrons and architects or those famous in word or deed. However, in recent years, new and more inclusive historical perspectives have emerged, embracing all of the actors involved in creating buildings, from architects to brickmakers, reflecting a burgeoning public interest in how things are made. We must work hard to hear the voices of 18th century craft practitioners. While the figures of Edmund Burke and Oliver Goldsmith are known to many who pass the west front of Trinity College, few know of the carver, James Robinson, who apparently single-handedly carved the leafy Corinthian capitals, the ornaments along the roof line, and the giant garlands of fruit and flowers at the ends of the building. Each of these is seven meters wide, while the drops suspended from them are almost two meters long. The master mason and overseer of the West Front told the college that nothing like them had been attempted in Ireland before, that the prices were lower than in London, and that the carvings were extremely well finished. At the south end of the West Front, Hidden behind high walls at number one Grafton Street stands the Provost's House, the residence of the Provost since 1760. After the Mansion House, it is the oldest house in continuous occupation in the city. As the home of the Provost, access is naturally limited. The facade is carved with what is known as rustication, a vigorous, textured treatment to give the appearance of strength. Each block of Ardbracken limestone from County Meath is laboriously carved in an icicle-like pattern. This virtuoso facade cost half as much as all of the stone used throughout the entire building. It was modelled on the famed London house of General George Wade, built 30 years earlier, after a design by Palladio. In 1755, Frederick the Great built a version of the Wade House at Potsdam. Of the three, only the Dublin House survives. Ardbracken stone was easily worked, but also easily damaged. Two centuries of pollution by fossil fuels caused a progressive accumulation of grime, particularly in sheltered areas. This major conservation challenge is aided by digital imaging, both for surveying and in generating a model of the icicled rustics. As Darley's accounts confirm, these blocks are 17 inches or approximately 43 centimetres deep, the height of a small carry-on backpack. The robust craftsmanship of the facade is carried into the interior, where timber panelling is artfully formed to simulate rusticated stone and is held in place by iron holdfasts made by the ironsmith, Timothy Turner. Rustication continues in the stair hall leading to the saloon. 
Here, the virtuoso iron balustrade, also by Turner, comprises 49 scrolled panels, each priced at 18 shillings and sixpence. The reception rooms were richly decorated by brothers Patrick and John Wall, whose widowed mother, Isabella, ran a flourishing plastering business. The accounts document the thousands of timber laths and iron hole fasts which supported the plaster and the sums paid for ornamental details. In the saloon, the Wall brothers filled the classical frieze and coffers with fluttering foliage and fierce fighting birds. Across the campus is an earlier building, the old library also richly documented in the college archives. While the spectacular two-storey barrel vaulted long room is world famous, less well known is the magnificent staircase at the West End, to which there is no public access. Crafted in oak by carpenters Charles Brooking and William Maple between 1723 and five, it has numerous features typical of the period. A broad handrail with a boldly raised profile, fluted columnar balusters, richly carved acanthus leaf brackets, and a curved swan neck ramp, marking the junction between the flights. Much of the work is concealed. Behind the nosing on the sides of each step are the dovetail joints between the treads and the balusters. The rest of the interior was completed decades later. Plaster rustication was introduced in the lower storey. A flowing scroll frieze marked the transition between the storeys. And above, a canthus framed panelling filled the expansive wall space. The well-documented buildings of Trinity College Dublin allow us peer through a keyhole into the unseen world of 18th century craftsmanship and shed new light on buildings lost to fire and decay. Combining our rich archival sources with new digital approaches, from LiDAR scanning to 3D modeling, 3D Craft aims to bring some of Britain and Ireland's most extraordinary craftsmanship back into view.